Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're here inside today with a book full of rabbit pedigrees because we're going to talk about how to fill out rabbit pedigrees for the babies that you have bred before you sell them. So first, what is a pedigree? A pedigree is simply tracing the parents, grandparents, and possibly even great-grandparents of the rabbit in question. You want to fill it out before listing your babies for sale and before accepting any deposits on your baby bunnies because buyers are going to want this. If they're buying for breeding or for show, they're definitely going to need this. But even people buying for just a pet rabbit might be interested. So fill this out before you even think of selling your babies. Some babies might go to pet homes. That's fine. And they don't require an accurate pedigree. So you don't have to be as detailed in filling it out. And obviously, if you're selling rabbits for meat, a rabbit pedigree is not at all helpful. So pet homes, you don't have to put every single thing down. You just have to put the basics. And for meat homes, you don't have to provide a pedigree at all. All right. But even pet homes like to get them. So I do recommend filling them out for all the rabbits, all the purebred rabbits that you sell. So what do you need to have on your pedigree? So you can get pedigrees, print them off online and fill them out yourself. Unlike with dogs, there is not a central registry of someone who has the records of every single dog in that breed. It's not really like that. It's more almost an honor system where you have to fill out based on the rabbit you have, where he came from, any babies you breed, you fill it out yourself. So each breeder will fill it out. And so that means every single time you do have to fill this entire thing out. You can use a computer program, a computer program that will generate the pedigree for you. But there are a few things you have to have on your pedigree. First of all, it has to say pedigree on it somewhere. Now, this one just says rabbit pedigree, which is totally fine. It doesn't have to say anything more detailed than that. But the word pedigree has to be on that, there somewhere. What else do you need? You need somewhere for your breeder information. Okay, so this is where you would put your own information before you sell your babies. You have to have that on there. One, because you have to, but two, it allows buyers to reach you if they have questions or want to recommend you to other buyers. So then that lets them know how to get in contact with you. So just make sure that is accurate. You can just put your rabbitry name and your phone number. You don't have to put your full address, but at least if you have your phone number or your email address or something like that, some way for them to get in contact with you is good. The more detailed this is, the better, because then they won't lose the information. So other things that you need to have on here. You need a spot for seller for the buyer's information. So this is where I would put who I sold the bunny to. Here I have a section where I write that I am selling this rabbit to this person. I sign and date it. So you need that. And everything else is about the rabbits in question. So over here you have the breed of the rabbit, his date of birth, and all the rabbits information. And then here you have dad and mom. Then you have grandpa and grandma and grandpa and grandma again. And then great grandparents. So depending on the registry or where you're showing, you might not need this final column. I like to have it anyway. Now you might not even have that information. You might not have that generation's information and that's fine. Two is usually sufficient for showing and breeding rabbits. And if it's not, it really doesn't take very long to breed one more generation and have this fully completed. So partial pedigree versus a full pedigree. A full pedigree is if all of this is filled out, okay? So if every single generation is filled out, then that is a full pedigree. If you're missing some information, so let's say you know dad and you know mom, and you know dad's side, but you don't know all of mom's side, if you don't have this whole thing filled out, then it's a partial pedigree. Now, partial pedigrees are useful as well, and often you can show a rabbit that has a partial pedigree as long as you have this pedigree in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so you do need your pedigrees. Um, 
A pedigree is mandatory if you're selling purebreds for show or for breeding. So I'm just going to pull here. So just, okay, we're just going to pull this a little bit and change angles. So I'm just going to talk about the pedigree I have up here right now because I'll just kind of talk a little bit about them. So I'm going to just talk about this number for a second. You notice AA209. And in case you're interested, this is Slate's, our rabbit Slate's pedigree. Okay, this tells you when he was born, what breed he is, what sex he is, and then his parents. You can see I have the entire full pedigree for Slate. Partially because I owned a bunch of his, par of his parents, so I knew his parents and his, both of his parents were pedigree. So I had their full pedigree. But let's talk about this number here for a minute, because you'll notice this number is filled out this one is not okay and that's because there's no registration number here because I didn't bother showing slate if I was going to show him I have to register him with um, Arba I'll put up a link to their website but I didn't decide to show him he was for bre he is for breeding so what we have here is just his ear number so let's talk about those numbers when you have a baby a baby bunny that you bred and you are selling him with a pedigree, either for showing or for breeding or even to a pet home, but if you are selling him with a pedigree, you have to have a unique number for that rabbit. It is a number you assign, so I'm talking about the ear number, not the registration number. Registration number comes from the uh, registry that you eventually register your rabbit with, but this number up here is actually a breeding number. Okay, this is the breeder number. This is the number I assigned him. So that ear number, you can see that I have ear numbers for every single rabbit in that pedigree. And I don't have most of the registration numbers written down because I don't really need it. I didn't really need it because it becomes irrelevant pretty quick. But this is the number you generate yourself. The registration number comes from the registry. Okay, so you do not fill in this one unless you've registered the rabbit for show you are going to fill in the ear number, not the registration number. This may also be called a breeder number. So you pick that number, okay? You don't have to go onto some website or contact it. You, you assign that number. So how you assign that number is really up to you. I can tell you how I assign it. So first of all, this number gets tattooed inside the left ear, not the right ear. The right ear is reserved for the registration number, okay? This one is tattooed inside the left ear, your own personal breeder identification number. So let's talk about how you generate that number. Okay. You'll notice that Slate's number is AA209. Okay. So I generate my numbers by first using two letters. I use AA for Anderson Acres. The two stands for how many years had I been breeding rabbits? So this was 2020. You can see he was born in 2020. So 2020 was my second year of breeding rabbits. I started breeding rabbits in 2019. So any rabbits that I bred, any of the babies that I bred and sold in 2019 had the number one. But he has the number two because that was the second year. Not everybody does that. Some people use a different system. So I know some people use the year the rabbit was born. So in his case... He was born in 2020, so people might use 20 as the number, but I am use, I use how many years I've been breeding. So you can kind of tell. So, for example, Falcon, his registration number, you haven't met Falcon yet, really. You've seen him in some videos, but you haven't actually met him. But Falcon, his breeder number that I've assigned is AA5 because he was born this year. He's Loki's son. So he was born this year, so he's a 5 because this is the fifth year I've been breeding. But 2020 was the second year had, I had been breeding. So he's a two. If I was going to use the year system, he would be a two zero. He, there is a zero there, but that's a different number. That's for something else. I'll explain that one in a minute. So I use twos, but you can use whatever you like. So 09, where'd that 09 come from? Well, Slate was the ninth kit born that year. So I didn't breed until the summer that year. I didn't breed anyone in March or anything like that. I didn't actually breed until July and August. So he was born in August of 2020, and he was the ninth kit born that year. So his number is 09. 
The pedigree below him was his brother Pumpernickel, who I don't have anymore, but his brother Pumpernickel at the bottom, his number is AA210. So AA Anderson Acres, two, born in 2020, and then one zero, he was the 10th rabbit born that year. This was the ninth rabbit born that year. That's how I do my numbers. So how you do your numbers is entirely up to you. Okay, but this is the number you're generating yourself. That's the number that you're going to tattoo in the left ear. I will talk about tattooing more in a separate video, but that is the number you tattoo. If you register the rabbit because you're going to be showing him, that's where that registration is important. So that registration number would go into the other ear, so it would go in the right ear. You never tattoo any number that you create in the right ear. You always go inside that left ear. And at some point, I will show you how I tattoo rabbits, but today's video is not about tattooing. It is just about the pedigree. So once you've put down the breed and the sex, write down his birth date, write down his name, his registration number, how much he weighed as an adult. Nobody cares how much he weighed as a baby. Wait till he is six months old, then weigh him. Okay? That's typically what that weight is. His color, the registration number, if you register him. Now this section's optional. You don't have to have winnings and I typically don't fill it out. I fill that out in my show section. I don't typically fill out winnings, but if you wanted to, you could have a winning section and write down all their different uh, winnings if you have winning rabbits. There's also a section here for other information. I use that for medical information that someone might need to know. And in my book, if I know that rabbit has passed away, I write down the date of death, okay, for the uh, adult rabbits. Even if I don't own the rabbit, if I find out that a rabbit that I sold to somebody passed away, I go back to my book and write down his date of death there. Slate's not dead, so he doesn't have a date of death or anything like that. So if you look, I'm just going to flip back. And I'm having trouble flipping pages today because my fingers don't want to work. Okay, so I'm just going to flip back a little bit here. Okay. There we go. So this pedigree is actually Slate's dad. Okay, this was Branch. And you will notice his number is not an AA, it's a TR. That's because I didn't breed him, so his breeder registration number from assigned from that breeder was TR739. So in her case, the person who bred him, she used TR because it represented the name of her rabbitry. She used a seven because that's the seventh year she had been breeding. And she used three nine because he was the 39th rabbit born that year, or at least the 39th she had read, uh, written down. <laughs> so that's how he got his number. That's how I decided to label mine as well because a lot of breeders do that. You don't have to. You can come up with another system entirely. You could simply give your rabbits numbers and then use two letters at the beginning that represent your rabbitry and then have 001 for the first rabbit you breed, 002, and you could just keep doing that. You don't have to change this first number based on the year. I do just because it lets me know at a quick glance how what year that rabbit might have been born in, but you don't have to do that. You can How you decide on this particular sequence is up to you, but a standard... A normal standard is the number of years you've been breeding at that point and then the kit number. So how many kits you had that year. But you'll notice that's what's different here is I didn't breed him so that's not my number. And these aren't my numbers because I didn't breed his parents. And then you'll notice you get a couple of different, instead of a TR you have an AR. You have ARs back here because that rabbit was bred by a different breeder again. Okay, whereas all of these ones were all bred by one person, and the this one and these two were bred by someone else. This one, all of these were bred by the same group, but just these three here were bred by somebody else. Okay, so all the rabbits, except for these three here, were bred by the same person. These three were a different rabbitry. 
So you can kind of look at the pedigree chart and kind of see where your rabbits might have come from. Okay, and again, we have buyer information, so I bought him. We have um, when he passed away, which was a while ago. Uh, that's why you never met Branch, because he passed away quite a while ago. And that's fine. I mean, it was sad, but I mean, like, get old. And we have uh, all the other information we need. So when you're filling out your pedigrees, do it promptly. I do it typically around the time when I'm weaning kits. Do it promptly, do it quickly, and make sure you provide this for anybody who's going to be either breeding or showing their rabbits. That's what this is important for, okay? You absolutely have to have these rabbit pedigrees for those purposes. And you might also want to provide them to pet homes just because it's kind of cute and it doesn't cost you anything to photocopy this. That's what I do. I fill it out for the entire litter. I don't fill out the ear number or the name. I fill out everything else because for one litter it's going to be the same. I photocopy it and then I insert the number and we add the name that the family picks for him because I typically don't pick the name. Uh, why would I do that? <laughs> I don't pick the name. So that is how pedigrees are filled out. Just make sure you do it quickly and make sure you provide it upon the sale of the rabbit. And when people are asking you about your rabbits, let them know if you have a pedigree that you can include or if you only have a partial pedigree, meaning only a part of it is filled out. All right? But that is really about it. All there is to say about pedigrees, I will come back in a later video and talk more in depth about tattooing. All right, I don't know if I will do it on camera. I might not because I don't really like doing that kind of stuff on camera. I need too many hands, but we'll see. But that's about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.